You'll, you'll correct me, but you're you're essentially um, bullish on commodities as a as a strategy to protect ourselves, which is where the the destruction of of domestic uh, oil production and things like that become become a factor in in America's crisis. Uh, what do we what do we do to protect ourselves? Well, I mean, you get out of dollars. I mean, you have to recognize that inflation is really a tax, right? We talked about that at the beginning of the program. Uh, the government has to collect money to spend money. And one way it collects it is through inflation, right? If it doesn't tax it legitimately, it does it through inflation. So the government can either take my money, literally take the money I've earned and give it to somebody else through taxes, or it can just print up money and give it to somebody else. But they've still taken something from me. They've taken my purchasing power and they've transferred it to whoever got the new cash because that person who got the government money didn't contribute any goods and services to society, but he wants to take out the goods and services that I help. Put. And so prices go up. And so those price increases amount to a tax. And if you want to avoid the inflation tax, you have to avoid the dollar because the government is taxing your dollars, your savings, uh, your, you know, if you have an annuity or you have a, a pension or some type of fixed dollar payment, or even your wages, you're getting paid and you're getting paid dollars, right? Inflation makes those dollars less valuable. So to the extent that you have dollars in your possession now, get rid of them, use them to buy something else. You know, and so I'm investing for my clients, I'm investing all around the world in productive assets, in companies. Many of the companies are in the resource sector. They're in the energy business, they're in the agriculture, they're in mining, but also utilities and property trusts and, and all sorts of companies that pay good dividends in foreign currency. And my theme really is to recognize that the United States has really been a burden on the world. And to the extent that Americans collectively have lived beyond their means, and we certainly have, it's only because the rest of the world has lived beneath its means to make that possible. So I think when the dollar is no longer the world reserve currency and the world no longer subsidizes American profligacy and Americans can only consume what we produce and we can only borrow what we save, that's gonna free up resources for the rest of the world uh, people in other countries are now going to be able to reap the rewards of their hard work and, and consume what they produce. And as the world spends less of its savings on U.S. treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, that will mean there'll be more money to invest locally in productive assets. So I think this is, there's going to be a gigantic boom in the post-U.S. dollar reserve world. I think the emerging markets are going to finally really emerge as the U.S. submerges. And I think a lot of, you know, investors are going to make a lot of money. You know, I think a lot of people made money investing in the U.S., uh, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century, the end of the 19th century. I mean, America was the up and coming power. And if you could see that, if you could read the writing on the wall and you came into the U.S. in 1890, 1900, 1910, and you started buying up businesses and buying up land and things, you, you became very, very rich. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. Well, I think things are changing again in the 21st century. America is the declining power. Uh, and, uh, you know, China and other emerging markets, particularly in, in Southeast Asia, are going to take the mantle. You know, unfortunately, there's more economic freedom there than there is here. Uh, you know, those countries have more in common with 19th century America than 21st century America does. You know, uh, we're emulating the failed social democracies, you know, the big socialist economies. Uh, we're following in their footsteps. We're not uh, following in our own. And, uh, and so I think there's, a, there's an opportunity here, not only to avoid the loss that is going to ravage most Americans, but to actually profit uh, from this major economic transition. Does that, um, does that correction that you're describing, it's, it's colossal and it'll be colossally painful, does that in any way put pressure on our political class not to do all the things you're predicting? Well, I mean, I, I don't think that our political class is going to feel any pressure until the crisis has already happened, right? Because as long as they can keep printing money and it has value, they're going to keep doing it. It's after the crash and it no longer has value that now there's, you know, you know, a, an impetus to change. But the question is, what will the American public accept? Who are they going to blame for their suffering and their misery? And, and what solutions are they going to accept as a political reality? 
Are they going to accept that the, this problem and this misery is the result of the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve and too much government spending and too much money printing? And the solution is the government get out of the way and you're on your own and let's let the free market, you know, repair what the government and the Federal Reserve destroyed. Are they ready for that or are they ready for more handouts? And, oh, you see, the, this is what happens when you have capitalism. This is greed and all this racism. You know, we need the government to come in and, and fix this. I mean, the, the, the public is pretty dumb. You know, remember, you know, it's, it's, an, it's a vote, right? I mean, everybody gets a vote. And uh, so it, it's hard to outvote the people that want something for nothing. Uh, the people that want, you know, a handout, right? They don't want freedom. They want free stuff. So I don't know. I mean, there's a part of me that is hopeful that from the ashes of this destruction, you know, we can rise something good. You know, I mean, that maybe it will be the impetus uh, to reject government and, and have a new American revolution and really embark on a journey to make America great again. I mean, it can be done. And in fact, you know, capitalism works so well in the 19th century, it would work even better now. I mean, we have a lot more capital. We have a lot more know-how scientific we have, you know, we have, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure. We have technology that did not exist a couple of hundred years ago. So if capitalism were good then, it would work even better now. We just have to try it. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members, where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.